in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed you will never be the same You've touched His grace Your life is changed I will never be the same I've touched Your grace My life is changed Oh Oh Come on, London. Prophesy to yourself. Listen, say. I will never be the same I've touched your grace My life is changed I will never be the same Your life is changed Your life is changed my life is changed. My life is changed. This is part of the service. My life is changed. My life is changed. My Your life must change. Your life must change. Yeah. I prophesy. Your life must change. Your life must change. One more time, London. Our lives are changing. We will never be the same with touch with your grace. Please sit down. The Bible says, Now the Lord is that spirit. There are many spirits, but the Lord is that spirit. Then it says, where the spirit of the Lord is, you will know because there will be a signature of liberty. Liberty is proof that he came. Liberty is proof that he moved. Liberty is proof that he is here. Your life is Your home is changing. Your health is changing. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray, but let me share two scriptures. Establish a mystery, and we allow the Spirit of God to have a convocation in this place tonight. For many of you, it will be that when the Lord turned your captivity, that it will be like a dream. That your mouth will be filled with laughter. Listen, this is no mere talk, believe me. This is not some motivation. This is the ministry of the Spirit. Acts chapter 26 and verse 22. Shall ask go by the now. Please bring the lady that shouts now under the anointing. Loud to the hearing of everybody. Bring her. Shelandos Calibra has covered the other. Acts chapter 26. The power of the Holy Spirit is here. Majesty. I'm ministering. I'm seeing 11 people. Sit down. I'm seeing a grace for speed. Listen, please sit down. Sit down. Sit down. That anointing will begin to move. Please bring them out to the aisles. I know there may not be space here. I'm teaching. But right now I stretch my hands. I declare right now by the spirit remember you came for an encounter your pastor told you that this is an encounter an encounter is an experience that makes God real manifest in the midst of his people 11 I stretch my hands I shift you by prophecy speed 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 new dimensions in the mighty name of Jesus I declare by the spirit help that lady help that lady Speed in the name of Jesus. Speed. I bring you the ministry of the Holy Spirit. New dimensions. Speed. Remember not the former things. Hear me, London. Nor consider the things of old. I came to open the two lift gates of this territory in the name of Jesus. Ephata, be open. He done, Peter. Hallelujah. I declare that everything that represents delay right now, I'm declaring by the spirit of grace, I stretch my hands over you. Makatos Kelabarutiasha. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be free. Every orchestration of witchcraft, every manipulation of dark powers, hear the word of the Lord. I come with the rod of a higher priesthood and I declare, be free now, be free now, be free now, be free now. Hallelujah. Please sit down if you can. Spirit of the living God. It's moving people to realms. Dimensions in the spirit. Young lady, I cost that power of witchcraft. Out now, out now, out of her life. Acts chapter 26, my God. Acts chapter 26, 
and verse 22. I'd like us to read it, just two scriptures. I'll share a few things and I'll begin to minister. Listen, if you came with any challenge here, be ready to wave it goodbye. Because these Egyptians you see today, believe me, I prophesy to you, you will see them no more forever. It says, therefore, can you read London? One to read. Uh-huh. Having obtained help, I continue. Listen, it takes, it takes, let's have King James, if this is King James, be sure that we use King James. Having obtained help from God, King James says, I continue. It takes help from God for a man to continue. Listen, when people remain, it is proof that God helped them. It is conventional to start. It is ordinary to start. But the staying power of a man financially, ministerially, is proof that you have obtained help from God. Scripture number 2, Psalm 18 and verse 29. Psalm 18 and verse 29. When you have it, please let me know so we read. The power of God is strong in this place. Psalm 18 and verse 29. Are you ready? This is someone's prophecy. Ready? Read. For by you, I can run against a troop. By my God, I can shift and even leap over a wall. Listen, it is only marvelous in our eyes when it is the Lord's doing. You don't celebrate me for walking. It is human to walk. But when people begin to demonstrate dimensions of results that are not affordable in the world of men, then it tells you that God is with them. Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night. And then he says, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. For no man can do this except God be with him. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Don't worry about those who are out here. There is a reason why I call them out. For those of us who were at the sessions yesterday, I began to teach about the mysteries of the kingdom. And I did share with us that dominion in this kingdom, please listen carefully, is the resultant effect of our comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom. A mystery is a body of information, a body of truth that is privy to a group of people. And the Bible says in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 11, Jesus is teaching and he says, It has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. These are the secrets that empower the saints to walk in victory. They are called mysteries. It's a body of light, a body of spiritual information that empowers the saints to represent the government of the Christ in experience. Hallelujah. There is a dimension of spiritual knowledge that is responsible for financial prosperity, responsible for favor, responsible for restoration, responsible for influence. And this conference has sought to expose us to the various dimensions of the ways of God. Listen. You are growing spiritually to the degree to which, number one, you conform to the image and the character of the Christ in experience. This is the first biblical index to measure spiritual growth. So I know that I'm growing spiritually to the degree to which I conform to the image and the character of the Christ. Paul said, my little children of whom I travail." Hold the person that gets up and begins to run. I just saw it in the spirit. It's the anointing. It's not ordinary. So just hold them so they don't injure themselves. I just saw in the spirit the power of God comes upon someone and he begins to run. 
it's, it's a prophetic step to show that there is acceleration coming to that person's life now listen please let's have some time to teach before i begin to minister so spiritual growth never forget this the first biblical index is our conformity in experience to the image and the character of the christ he says my little children of whom i travail until christ be formed in you the second biblical index for measuring spiritual growth is your depth of comprehending the ways the mysteries of the kingdom so that you stop shadow boxing you come to a point of understanding you know what spiritual law is responsible for the results you seek you do not randomly apply truth in hope that one of them will work you know the allocation that the blood of jesus is for you know the allocation that the name of jesus you know what results what does your seed do when you sow what does your confession do when you speak this is spiritual maturity And I began to explore yesterday the mysteries of the kingdom. I shared with you a number of them, the laws of dominion, the laws that the saints reign by. Number one, I established the mystery of priesthood or prayer. The first key that we examined yesterday was the ministry of prayer. Luke 18 and verse 1. I'm doing a recap for those of you who are just coming today. The Bible says that he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean pray from morning till night. It means be consistent. Hallelujah. Are we together? Yes. And then the second dimension, I shared with us another law. It's the realm of your glory. It's the realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing You are holy You are holy You are holy You are holy Ta-da-da 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 the spirit of prophecy is coming on two people the spirit of prophecy is a grace that my father is releasing this is that the book of Acts says this is that Halis Calibra Hasadadia that you will speak for the mysteries of the kingdom now please listen I shared with you the second spiritual mystery the ministry of men and now I want to share with you one more very briefly to cap up this session and this conference. These are the keys that empower the saints to represent the purposes of the Christ in experience. I'm praying that among the many things that happens to you in this conference is a fresh hunger for the things of God. Listen, that you will know and understand afresh that Christianity is not a religion. It's not an advocacy to be loyal to a deity somewhere. It's an experience that is provable. 
the tangibility the substance of God can be demonstrated here and now are we blessed now I want to share with you the mystery that controls the anointing of the Holy Spirit I want to touch a bit on the anointing because this is one of the secret behind the rising of the saints listen the faith life is such that you you do not just rise by intention alone it takes more than a sincere heart to rise and transit into dimensions that will reveal the glory of god through your life to a generation it takes more than a sincere heart it takes more than a desire to serve god you must be empowered now watch this jesus is with the apostles and he took time to mentor them for three and a half years are we together now and then jesus is preparing to start his passion the event that leads to his death his burial and his resurrection and then he begins to talk to them about this strange personality they had seen him walk upon the earth they saw the signs the wonders the invincibility of this person then he began to introduce them he said i have many things to tell you jesus is speaking but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the spirit of truth is come when he comes he will guide you into all truth he says that he will reveal to you the things that pertain unto the father he said i will not leave you comfortless jesus is speaking to them he said tarry ye in jerusalem in other words he was saying gentlemen i appreciate your time you have been faithful mentees but it takes more than information to turn your world around tarry until you are endued with power from on high listen hear me london hear me believers it takes more than a good heart to transform your world it takes more than good intention believe it or not we are immersed in a world that is wicked and satanic in nature it will take the empowerment of the spirit for you to rise to that dimension where your life vetoes your background vetoes your limitations and now begins to represent the purposes of god psalm 92 and verse 10 psalm 92 and verse 10 if it's projected please read it with understanding ready read but my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a wild ox or a unicorn it says and i shall be anointed with fresh oil please sit down let me explain to you what the anointing is the anointing is not oil in a bottle no the anointing is not even a handkerchief the anointing is not about falling down and standing up the anointing is god's ability the anointing is an authorization listen to me the anointing legitimizes your dominion it is an authorization to represent the purposes of god to be anointed means to be ordained To have a throne that backs and sponsors your relevance and your exploits to be anointed is not just to have dots of oil you can have oil on your head and yet you are not anointed oil does not anoint oil anoints because someone anointed the oil now listen very carefully so we understand that in this kingdom we cannot rise beyond certain dimensions if we are ordinary science can go so far and we appreciate how far it's taken us sociology can go so far and we 
appreciate the intelligence of sociology but listen the days and the times that we live in will require men and women who are not just learned men who are full of the power and the grace of God because the arsenals of darkness that continue to be released to sabotage the purposes of God will require men and women of fire and power and grace not just nominal people nominal Christians hoping that things will work well you will need a dimension of grace and power hear me Paul was teaching the church in Ephesus and he says that it be revealed to principalities and powers by the church the ecclesia the manifold multi-dimensional wisdom of God hallelujah and so the anointing is God's authorization to represent him the anointing is God's ability upon a man or a vessel to produce his dimension of results. It is only marvelous when it is the Lord's doing. When a man produces results that is higher than that of men, it is proof that he has outsourced an ability that is not human. Are we together? It is normal to intelligently apply for a job but when jobs look for you that's not normal it, it then it then tells you that there, there is an ability upon you are we blessed now please listen very carefully many people pastor desire the anointing respectfully speaking I know that there are men and women of God in this place, veterans of the gospel, and I salute you for standing to lift up the banner of righteousness over London and by extension Europe. But listen to me. Let me tell you this. Most people talk about the anointing. Most people write books about the anointing. Most people desire to be anointed. You know, when people meet me, Pastor, one of the first things they want to find out is the anointing. What is the secret of the power, the grace of God upon your life? and i i want to share with you a secret tonight that i pray in the name of jesus that you will value you see talking about the anointing does not bring the anointing wishing for the anointing as important as that is does not bring the anointing i will share with you the secret Proverbs 23 and verse 26 because we have to be anointed there is a move of God that is coming over London believe me I'm standing to say it in the open and I'm standing to prophesy you see let me tell you this an apostolic spirit is mandated to capture that which God intends to do over a generation and over a dispensation that through the sacrifice of alignment you understand the speakings of the spirit per season and then you communicate the same to the people so that they will run that read it and I'm saying it London hear me in the name of Jesus the heritage of fathers and patriarchs that took the gospel from this region down to Africa we pray may those graves be open may those mantles come out I speak to the earth of London I speak to the earth of Europe the blood of sweet wiggles one men and women champions of the gospel in the name of Jesus may those mantles find people afresh find young men find young women let there be a rebirth of the apostolic a rebirth of the prophetic a rebirth of the evangelistic a rebirth of the pastoral a rebirth in the name of jesus i speak over the climate of london hear the word of the lord i speak to the bowels of the earth that the sacrifices of men and women heroes of the gospel some died and left prophetic words in this season 
I stand by the privilege of the grace that he's given me over a generation and I speak London hear me Europe hear me a move of the spirit is coming a move of signs and wonders like never before in addition to what God is already doing multiply dimensions of grace of power Please sit down. Proverbs 23 26. We have to be fast. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. Please, someone read it if you can find it. Ready? Read. My son, uh huh. Give me. Hold on. The first law is not give me your offering. It's not give me your songs. It's not give me your fasting. It's not give me your worship. It's not even give me your Bible study. My son, if you want me to use you, if you want to stand and become a voice that speaks my purposes, listen to me. The non-negotiable condition, unattractive, but powerful is that you must give me your heart you've heard me say it and let me repeat it for the first time in london the price for all of god is all of you the price for all of god is not your intellect that's too small for all of him the price for all of god is not your talent the price for all of god it's not even your education as important as it is the price for all of God is not your money the price for all of God is all of you where he no longer becomes like a house help or an errand boy that goes around to bring you prosperity that goes around to bring you healing he is more than that they don't know what you mean to me they don't know what you mean to me listen i started my walk with god sincerely not desiring to be a preacher it was never my desire to be famous uh, my background didn't even allow for the possibility of that kind of lust i came from a very con conservative background please listen very carefully but i got to a point in my work with god i became tired of religion i became tired of church listen i saw the sick go back sick I saw the oppressed go back oppressed now this is not an advocacy to fight preachers please understand what I teach you this is not an advocacy to resent I, I appreciate the labor of the fathers and men and women who have gone before us they did their best with the grace and the understanding available for them I said this is not no it can't be the more I read the Bible the more I found out preachers didn't know God said something is wrong listen Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 1 says through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom I the hunger I didn't know it was the anointing for a generation that was seeking entrance into my life I became restless 
I didn't want to be around people most of the time. What are you doing to me, oh God? I remember the first time I took God's generals. It was as though I was reading about my relatives. I said, this is it. They are not the only ones. There were many other generals in Africa and many other people who never had. We salute Robert Laerden for the best that he could do. But there had been many other moves that didn't have the opportunity to be captured in history. However, the hunger continued to grow. Be careful when nothing quenches your hunger is proof that God is the one who put it there. When food and relationships and a job and money and promotion does not seem to quench that hunger, don't try to kill it. It's proof he's, he, God lures men into deeper dimensions by planting a hunger that seems not to have an explanation. Why am I waking up in the middle of the night? I can't sleep. I just seek his presence. I don't even know why the sleep does not come. Why is it that I don't want to find myself in the midst of people? again what is this fear I continue to cry I don't know why why are you crying I don't know listen it's not always a psychological problem is the luring of the spirit is the mantle for a generation is calling you is someone listening to me please settle down And so, I got to a point where I began to seek him. Listen, pastor, days became weeks. Weeks became months. Months became a few years. I got to a point where I knew if I did not find him, I would die. Listen, I was not looking for fame. I didn't want a generation to know Joshua Selman. No, it still has never been my agenda. Are we blessed? And one night, one night, I'm lying down flat, and here he comes into my room, His Majesty. Exalted high above the worship It's not a special number for me Of the people of the earth I see the Lord I see the Lord For my eyes have seen the King The Lamb upon the throne He reigns forever let me tell you what I saw the train of his robe fills the temple a cloud of heavenly worshippers surrounding your throne and we join with them now crying holy holy is the Lamb the Lamb of God. Listen, Pastor, until that time, I had a vision. And in that vision, I was standing somewhere. I'm, I'm sharing my story for a reason. You, you understand? Yes. Just help those under the anointing. And it was as though I ran away from a group of people who were to come and hurt me and then the window was opened and suddenly I saw a generation a whole generation crying and they were saying no food and no water and I was looking at them from an altitude and I said who is the cause and they pointed at me and I said no I, I wouldn't do that I'm, 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 I mean my name means the way to love why should I do that and they pointed you are the reason why we have no food and no water and then I promised them that I was coming to set them free but I was afraid it looked as though there were certain people waiting for me 
and I made up my mind if I perish let me perish but I will not allow this generation die and as soon as I opened the door here was this old man giant mighty he held my hand that was the Holy Spirit and he said let's go I will go with you listen And that was when I knew that the grace that he put upon my life was not just for a church. It was more than a ministry. It was for a generation. That's why when you listen to the teachings, you don't even know what happens to you. It is the grace for a generation. It is deep calling unto deep. Please understand this. Now, Jesus appears to me, pastor. I'm amazed because he's not talking yet I'm understanding what he's saying that was when I learned in the realm of the spirit that you do not have to talk to speak that light is a language the entrance of thy word he says give it light listen to me he stretched forth his right hand towards me you know many people say they have seen Jesus now I do not have the authority to you know I don't castigate the body I love the body I'm sent to the body but I can tell you many encounters that people say they met Jesus is not true if you meet Jesus the Jesus I met it would take the grace of God for you to be normal again believe me when I tell you that he stretched his hands towards me and a light it's like taking the sun and putting it inside an ant. How I did not die is a question I will ask him when we meet again. Wow. What was this light for? Listen. As he stretched his hands towards me, the experience was over and he left. It would take many years for me to understand what that encounter was for. I opened the Bible and there was a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. I said, what is this? I began to see things that I never studied. The entrance of thy word giveth light. In one other encounter, the Lord speaks to me under that atmosphere. He says, my son, from today, I give you my presence as a gift. This is what he told me my eyes is open then to this vision and i'm seeing this angel standing and he said this angel will walk with you he is called the angel of the lord's presence this is what is responsible for some of these supernatural manifestations you see i'm taking our time to explain this because god is mighty but he can be explained are we together now And then in another encounter, it was complete darkness. The doors, the rooms, the street was empty. And I saw sick people, all kinds of people. And they were crying and calling. And then a voice spoke to me to go and heal and deliver them. Now listen, the Lord spoke to me and told me, Pastor, that everywhere, city, nation, region that he would allow me to go to, the light that came from Jesus to me that there must be someone in that nation that that light is an instruction I have never disobeyed I need to understand I need to explain to you this person talking to you so that you will understand some of the things happening and everywhere I have traveled to there must be someone in that room who is hungry and desperate enough that the light that came from his majesty to this earthen vessel who has been most favored by him that it extends to a generation and this night please believe me some of you for your families some of you for your ministry that that light will visit you Pastor, your wife, I'm prophesying to you, ma'am. You are stepping into a level in the spirit. You're one of these people I'm speaking about. There is a grace for influence. 
I'm stretching my hands to you in the name of Jesus I shift you by the spirit of grace I prophesy in the open and I declare upon you step into a new phase a new dimension in the spirit please sit down listen so when you hear about Joshua Selman London Europe there is nothing special about this man in myself it is an honor and a privilege that he is given to be one of those who will hold the button that our fathers held though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before and this is the song we'll be singing forever holy is the lord holy Listen, I have an assignment tonight. Yes, I will pray for the sick. Yes, we will trust God to deliver the oppressed. But more than that, like an Olympic light and an Olympic fire that never dies, I brought something from Africa back to Europe. What the fathers brought to Africa our fathers held on to this Olympic light this fire and by his grace he's granted us the opportunity to bring it back the fire that saves that heals that delivers that authentic Christianity the pursuit of his majesty more than things so I'm trusting that somewhere in this service before we are done that fire will move from left from left to right to right from top from top to bottom to bottom and move all over all over is an ignition is an ignition hallelujah please sit down for five minutes and then we pray Please listen to me. Hear me, London. There is a price for the anointing. There is a price for the glory of God. Hear me. Please listen. The price is more than fasting. The price is more than prayer. The price is more than Bible study. The price is more than church attendance, as important as that is. The price for life is death. This may be an uncomfortable teaching, but if it is God you want to host, only dead men can carry God. The door that leads to life is called death. The door that leads to the throne is called the cross. You must die to live i have been crucified with christ he says nevertheless i live yet not i but christ that lives in me and the life that i live in the flesh that is the body i live by the faith of the son of god now please sit down let me interpret what is happening to you right now because the bible says romans chapter 8 from verse 18 it says i reckon I reckon that the sufferings of this present time the constraints Lord listen there are many of you 
the dealing of God in your life is seeking for interpretation because if you do not know you will think he's the devil when you want to move forward others are moving God says you stay back and you don't know why Lord what are you up to with my life why can't I live a normal life it's a sign of an anointing looking for you it's a sign of a grace looking for you others are sleeping and his majesty wakes you while they are sleeping he's saying pray lord allow me i want to live a normal life and then he says not so for the grace for a generation hear me he will give you instructions that may not make sense take now thy son thy only son whom thou lovest if you want to be Abraham then you must be willing to give up Isaac only those who give up Isaac are called Abraham not those who give birth to Isaac those who can give away Isaac listen to me there is a message that our generation is trying to forget and respectfully I stand and lend my voice with many across the globe that are bringing this voice back not everything is free there is a price for the glory of God there is a real price for authentic spiritual power it will cost you your convenience it will cost you your ego it will cost you your reputation when you want to stand tall you must learn to go down the secret of standing is kneeling the secret to run is to stay the the key to your speed in life is your staying power the more you stay in his presence the more you run this is the message that a generation is trying to forget listen to me it is true that the same lord is rich unto all god loves everybody but he does not trust everybody it takes a track record in the spirit you can have visions of yourself moving in power and grace whether in business in ministry corporate life and it never manifests because there is a real price oh dear generation hear me there is a real price the price of prayer the price of surrender the price of death where what you want is him not you not your ambition listen the lord told me something years ago he said son if you can see me there is nothing i will not give you and he meant it i stand before the god of heaven in the presence of your pastor in the presence of god's people london europe i have no business building an agenda or an empire for myself no my agenda is not fame i'm not interested in being a celebrity all i want is to be that donkey that his majesty can ride upon And I told him I said Lord if you will ever give me the opportunity to represent your purposes to a generation I am honored I am a man I am not perfect but I am broken listen to me I share with you this is not acting I'm sharing my heart with you if it is God you want to host it will cost you your ego it will cost you your ambition Only those who can give him all can carry all of him. You want to tell the sick be healed and they are healed? It takes more than desire. It takes more than kneeling down for a man of God to lay hands on you. No. There are certain wells you must dig by yourself. It is a track record. Are we together? And so, I learned by experience that if you seek him and you don't find him is because you did not seek him with all your heart London 
I appreciate your passion for the things of God otherwise you would not be here I appreciate your honor for me and your precious pastor I thank you for all that you have done I thank you for your love and everything but you have celebrated Joshua Selman thank God for what he's done in my life but let me tell you I introduce to you afresh his majesty I introduce to you afresh the God who is bigger than us all I introduce to you afresh the maker of this man that you so admire listen if all you see is me you have not seen well you must see him my agenda is not to come and build fans no more than that sincerely he knows that you're all I want you're all I've ever needed you're all I want Help me know you are near yeah. You're all I want More than fame, more than the reputation You're all I've ever needed You're all I want Help me know you are near. Hear me? I'm speaking to you by the Spirit. He's calling you to a place of fresh hunger. This is my message tonight. His power is available, but His power will require a depth of hunger. And if I can find someone that is desperate enough tonight to say, Lord, I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart that I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart sing lord i will bow lord i will bow to you to no other god but you lord this is my desire i sincerely seek to see the christ revealed and the Christ glorified like John he says that I may decrease it's not self-condemnation it's, it's an attempt to show how much he seeks to see his majesty revealed hear me tonight he's calling you to give up your agenda does not mean to forget about it it means to dethrone it until Christ becomes Lord of it. He's not asking you to not seek prosperity. Don't get me wrong. No, I teach the whole counsel of God. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to increase. He wants you to go forward. You call it a shift. However, he wants to be Lord of all. His jealousy does not allow him to share any space with any other thing. so I made up my mind and I told him Lord if you will give me anything at all that will take your place let it never come I meant it I still mean it any platform any anointing that you will ever give me that will make me shift the attention of a generation from you to me may it never come 
it is my pledge to see his glory revealed I'm not the only one he has called it is a generation it is an honor he's given and we stand faithful to that which he has given but hear me London I believe that the men who will restore the ordinances of God are in this building tonight I believe that the men and the women who will bring back that fire like the days of Gideon like the days of Samson like the days of Elijah hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for